I think in my life, the day I was most anointed so far was in Malawi. God answered my prayer that day. I don't know if he, if he will exceed that in answering prayer. 200 people were coming for baptism. And I entered into the river. And I said, just like, I was led, I was led. But it was a strange lead. I entered into the river and I said, just like it was in the pool of Bethesda. Where the place was stirred. And everyone that entered first was healed of his place. Let this pool be stirred. That water, that baptismal water conducted deliverance from 12 noon to 4 p.m. But you know what? You know why it happened? It's called grace. It's better for that thing not to happen. Because if you, if you have become weak and the people in Malawi now invite you again... <laughs> It's an organic matter. It's... Oh! I was on the pulpit and I saw a red python. Then I said, Oh! Even the red python came to church. Thirteen people began to off their clothes. Become naked. There was nothing the ushers could do to, to restrain them. But so we had to avoid them and continue with our Bible study. That deliverance was conducted that day without the hand of a man. It was later that I discovered that the local python court knew that I was coming into the land and they had been given instructions to stop the young man. But when I stood on the pulpit, I said, Ah, the python himself came to church and the stranglehold, that court was dissolved. It was in Malawi. I finished preaching and we went home. And the woman went and sat on my seat and she prophesied the evening. When that news came out, people came from Zambia. The trek from Zambia. It was two and a half days journey. Trek from Zambia. Putting their, 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 their sick in Webaru. When I saw the people from Zambia, they looked like people that were raised from the dead. <laughs> Hallelujah. There was a government of official that we prayed for in Lilongwe. He had a cut on his back inside. That is one of his one of his muscles. So it was revealed by an X ray. I prayed for him. He didn't believe my, my uh, prayer. Until he went and took another s Two days after I prayed for him. And God had removed the torn one. And replaced it with another one. Even the doctor himself. Was the one that almost fell. So when we came back. The man was a believer. He was a non-believer when, before we left. He was a believer before we came back. After seven days. From his house to the airport. The driver said. Ah. Pastor, this is my father-in-law's house. Let's treat him. I got there. Saw that his father-in-law was deaf. From the age of nine, that was when his hearing was sick. And I touched him. I said, Jesus can heal. I didn't even pray for him. I just touched him. In the years old. His wife had arthritis. Could not stand up. I touched her. She began to walk. The son came and spoke in his house. said, hey. This fake prophet, this fake. I heard it as loud as human voice. So I went to him and I said, You called me a fake prophet. He knelt down. I blew air on him. He was slain. <laughs> I left that. The man begged me to lie on his bed for 30 minutes so that something would drop. Meanwhile, I was late for my flight. The driver was crying while we were going to the airport. Crying. and driving in, in, in the night. <laughs> but you know that you know what? It was grace. If you have become weak before you visit Malawi again, it's, it's better for you to turn down the, the, the invitation. 